In this video, we will cover the following. How the selectors work with different UI hierarchies and frameworks. We will use a simple notepad automation as a sample to give you an idea of how selectors are generated. The advantages and disadvantages of selectors compared to other methods. We'll dive deeper into the structure of the selectors. Plus, I'm going to introduce you to a powerful tool called UI Explorer to build well-structured and effective selectors. The main challenge of a UI automation software is to identify objects on the screen, like buttons, labels, and text fields. This is the first step towards simulating a user's command. For instance, if you want to automate a simple click on a button, you have to tell the software what button you want to click so the robot will perform the same action as the human would do. For the human user, it's simple. We can visually identify and correlate objects on the screen. But for a software robot, it's sometimes not that easy. There are different ways to identify objects. In UiPath, the most common method is by using selectors. Let's learn how UiPath drives automation by identifying elements on the screen. The most common and accurate method is by using attributes of UI objects as reference points. UiPath creates a unique identifier for each UI object through an XML code structure called selector. In this video, we will learn the basics of using selectors. This is the foundation of how UI elements are identified on the screen. Let's start by pulling up a new blank flowchart. Let's name it selectors. Okay, let's start with a very basic recording. So let's click on record and select basic. We'll run a robot in a very basic application. I already have my notepad open. We will use the automatic recorder so it will automatically capture the actions we did on the screen. Let's click the editable frame in the notepad. Let's type a sample text. Then we press enter. That's it. Let's click on save and exit. Now, let's investigate what's going on with the recorded activities. As you can see, we have a single and simple activity in our recording sequence container, the type in 2. It contains all the information it needs to perform the typing of text into the notepad. So let's dive in with a selector because this is where the magic happens. In the right side of the screen, we have all the properties for this activity. The target property is where the settings are stored to find the target object. So let's expand it. Alright, so here's our selector. Let's pull it up by clicking this button next to it. Now, as you can see, here on the top are available attributes. These are application components used to identify the target element. Down here is our selector. At a glance, it looks like a few lines of simple code that filters the target UI object. Let's talk more about this later on. These lines of codes are imprints for attributes of the target object. So that even if I close and reopen Notepad, our selector will still work. You can edit and modify the selectors, but we'll save that for more advanced lessons. For now, let's discuss the structure of the selector. To better explain this, let's click on Open in UI Explorer. This tool is also available in a standard toolbar. Let me go over first on how to use the UI Explorer. The UI Explorer is your best tool in investigating and optimizing selectors. On top of the box are the attributes that make up the selector. If you are familiar with XML, the selectors are like fragments of XML that are put up together. Each line represents an object on the screen. The way it is structured is that each line represents the layout container of the target object from the outermost to the nearest. Here in the second box, labeled current UI, is a tree-like representation of objects. This is where we can add or remove elements from selectors. Each level corresponds to a line of code that represents an object. Let's enable the highlighter by clicking this button. Now let's go to the tree and click each element. The first one represents the application window. In this case, it's a notepad. The next one is the editable control which contains the vertical scroll bars on the right. Take note of the difference between the editable control and the editable text. The editable control includes the scroll bars where we can add actionable items like scrolling down or clicking the up and down scroll. And the third one is editable white space where we can put up our text into. Let's double click the edit control. Here, in the third box, you can further investigate sub controls. These are called children. 
Let's click the vertical scroll bar for example. If we further expand this, this will show more children for this specific control. So each UI object can have one or multiple children or parents in the layout hierarchy. Each individual item represents an object on the screen. Just like this push button lineup, we can easily add this attribute by double clicking on it. Okay, let's put it back to the original selector by clicking the parent node, the edit control and double clicking the editable text. Selectors are being used from basic to advanced automation to any native legacy or web applications. They will only differ in the structure since they will have different attributes to identify the objects on the screen. The process of producing selectors will be the same. You can see how UiPath will be able to accurately identify objects on the screen by using the power of selectors. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of using selectors over the other methods? It's clear that through selectors, the automation is much faster and accurate. Even if the target object has been moved or resized, the robot still runs perfectly on them. Though there are cases that selectors are impossible to use. Example, Citrix application runs on a virtual desktop and it's not possible to identify elements inside Citrix. So the best way to automate these applications is by using OCR or image-based automation. The only drawback of using selectors is the automation won't be reliable when running in complex UI like web browsers. The selector won't be valid for some web pages with dynamic or volatile structure. Still, there is always a solution for this. We'll talk about this in the next video. We'll talk how to modify selectors using UI Explorer. We'll also talk more on how selectors behave in other applications like web browsers or Java applications. See you in the next video.